Welcome back to Inside Africa at Kampala Fashion Week in Uganda. One of the best known and most successful designers to present a collection here is Jose Hendo. Much of her identity collection features large patterns inspired by fingerprints. Jose's collection also includes a trademark of her own fashion DNA. She uses a fabric that appears in all her designs, a material called bark cloth, for many of the swirls and other elements in this collection. Three days after she appeared at Kampala Fashion Week, Jose drove with us, about two and a half hours southwest of Kampala, into Buko Mansimbi. So for the first time, she could watch bark cloth being harvested from the forest. Yeah, you have uh, an idea of how it's all made. Well, I have read about it. Fred Mutebi, a local artist who uses bark cloth in his works, is our guide. This is how cloth comes from the Mutaba tree. This is the tree that we chose because of its size and readiness for processing. The Baganda people of South Uganda used this same process to make bark cloth more than 600 years ago. They begin by chipping off the mutuba tree's outer layer of bark. The layer is not needed to produce the cloth, but these workers make use of it and everything else they take from the tree. Even the leaves are eaten by animals as fodder. This is more medicinal to especially goats, cows and sheep. So they are collecting it and putting it in a bag and then they mix it with uh, um, animal feed. This second layer of bark is what the workers need to make the cloth. They pull large sections of it away from the tree and it's flexible enough that they can roll it up to carry it away. But before these workers leave the forest, they pack damaged parts of the tree with cow manure as part of a process to make sure bark will grow back. They wrap it with banana fibers so that they protect it from the weather, the sun or strong rain, rain or insects. And it will take one week to take off and then they will have to wait for another year before they make another harvest off of the same tree. Workers will next need to stretch and thin the bark out to make cloth. The process is both time and labor intensive. They simply beat the bark repeatedly with a series of mallets. I can see you guys, sorry. I can see. Then we employ another mallet. As you can see, the grooves are different. You are making it now finer by using more blunt grooves. For three hours, they beat the bark, stretching it out. And by that time, it has spread to about uh, six feet from the original uh, two. Workers use more mallets and continue pounding for as long as 12 hours. Until a piece of bark that began two feet wide is stretched to five meters. And by the end of it, you have a fine fabric. Bark cloth was largely ignored after cotton and other materials became popular. But Fred is on a mission to spread awareness of the tree as an eco-friendly source of sustainable income. We join Fred and Jose as they visit a nearby school to spread that message. Fred believes the biggest challenge in producing bark cloth is finding workers who want to do the job. Right now, producers who spend as long as 18 hours transforming bark into cloth make only about $50 a day. If we can ensure that they can get enough money from the amount of job they put from the job, I think it will be sustainable because more youth are going to clamor for it. And that's what some of us 
are trying to do. You obviously have the different colours. You have the black, you have the orange, and you have the red. Jose is doing her part by trying to make bark cloth a fashion trend. We drive back to Kampala to get a personal fashion show and a closer look at some of her work. This is uh, one of the signature looks of this identity collection and um, what I try to do here is um, achieve an element of just working with completely bark cloth. Jose Hendo is an African designer with an international reach. Now based in London, she embraced bark cloth when she began learning of its cultural significance to her Ugandan roots. That's it, it all for me. So, bark cloth it is. Every season, I apply it in a different way, different technique, and try to keep pushing the boundaries with it. The style is especially successful in Africa, which surprised Jose during the first Kampala Fashion Week. So I came back last year with it for the first time ever. I called it bark to the roots, so bark cloth coming back to the roots. What I didn't know is the reception it would get here. They would want it to go on for year after year after year, so it's become back to the roots. There's also a practical reason to use it. Bark cloth is quite versatile. But uh, what's so exciting about it was that the shapes I got from it were just amazing. Very sculptural and very, you know, avant-garde. But there's also some controversy in using it. Bark cloth is now traditionally used to cover bodies for burials. And to use it for fashion, Jose admits, is taboo to some people. Since it was the first cloth made by man, used by them for everything, getting married, going to bed in, um, in the house, around, you know, whatever they were doing, was, it was perfect then. So what has changed it? Nothing has changed. The same people make it. There's nothing they've added to it that makes it a problem to, to use as clothing. So it's just really down to perception. So we're trying to change that. Coming up, we meet two of Uganda's hottest fashion designers. They're two women who get style from completely different materials.